Math is a subject that brings about many different emotions. Think about how math makes you feel. For some, math is something they feel good about. It makes sense and it's logical. For others, it brings anxiety, fear, and frustration. These were some of the feelings I had when I was young, and my ultimate goal for my future students is the exact opposite. I want my students to have a passion for math because of the instruction I provided for them. In Education 370, I had the opportunity to work with a small group of students and teach them math concepts provided by their teacher. Before we began working with our small groups in the field, we looked at Piaget's constructivist theory and developmental stages of learning, Vygotsky's social constructivist theory, and growth mindset. These have helped me develop lessons for my small group in the field and will continue to help me in my developing philosophy of teaching mathematics. According to Piaget and his constructivist theory, students construct their own knowledge through the developmental stages of learning, starting with a concrete way of learning, moving into a representational way of learning, and eventually moving into a more abstract way of learning. While teaching my small group for Mrs. Darden's class at Ward Elementary, I used manipulatives with my students as a concrete method of learning for them. I taught my students to divide three digit numbers by one digit number using base 10 blocks and string. This allowed them to see exactly what was happening when we divided, say, 136 by four. We then moved on to represent the equation by using place value drawings. It eventually moved into the standard algorithm, which is the most abstract form of mathematics because it only contains numbers. Starting with concrete and moving to abstract helped students to be able to visualize in their heads what was happening when they solved that standard algorithms. Because Piaget's theory is based a lot on schema or background knowledge, I also asked questions in the beginning of my lessons to activate what they may have already known about the lesson's topic. Through Vygotsky's social constructivist theory, learning is inherently social. Vygotsky believed that social interaction needed to happen for learning to take place. He also believed there to be a zone of proximal development, where a more knowledgeable other could come in to scaffold, and here is where learning also occurs. Throughout my lessons with my small group, I had plenty of social interactions through guided practice. Many of my guided practices consisted of partner work or whole group work. We would play games and I would scaffold where needed. In our class, we also talked about what a growth mindset is compared to a fixed mindset. This changed my outlook on a lot of things after learning about the growth mindset, especially in regards to math. Prior to learning about growth mindset, I lived very much in a fixed mindset. I thought that because I struggled in math, I would never be able to teach math or teach it well. I then made an intentional effort to not think that way, telling myself that if I work hard enough, I can be an effective math teacher. Over the course of the weeks that we were at Ward, I felt myself feeling more confident in my teaching abilities. I was also able to implement the growth mindset with my small group of students. I noticed a couple of them were talking down on themselves about math and how they were not good at it. I used this impromptu moment to talk to them about having a growth mindset. I told them that if they kept thinking that way, it would only become more and more true. They needed to think more positively about their abilities, saying they can do it. I told them that the more they say that they can do it and try their hardest, they will see progress. They seemed to take this well, and as I reminded them to have a growth mindset, the entire trajectory of our time together changed and was extremely effective. Lastly, I created assessments for each lesson I gave to determine if they met my objective for the lesson. The bulk of my assessments were formative due to the fact that we did not get to independent practice in any of our sessions. I used mostly checklists and an observation to assess how my students were doing. I also would ask the students to hold up a number on their hand between 1 and 3 to assess their level of understanding or how they felt. 3 being I understand, 2 being I kind of understand, and 1 being I do not understand. I used all these assessments to check their understanding and abilities as well as how effective my teaching was. If I noticed any disconnect or the students held up 1s and 2s, I would go back and reteach or explain it in a different way so that they would understand better. As for my future classroom, I would like to implement all of these things. 
I would like to use manipulatives and or visuals in my lessons to make my lessons more interesting, engaging, and authentic. I will try to structure my lessons using the constructivist theory, activating schema, and using the developmental stages of learning, and the social constructivist theory, allowing students to work in groups and scaffolding when they need it to learn best. I want to incorporate the growth mindset into my class as well. I think introducing students to the growth mindset early on could completely shift their attitudes towards math, fulfilling my ultimate goal of wanting my students to walk away from my class with a passion for math and learning in general.